Oh, that's crunchy. Okay, wait for it, Sharon. Welcome to the Wedding Crunch episode 2.05. What? This is how it's going to go. Welcome to the Wedding Crunch brought to you by Warren Photography and Martini Bride. I'm Johnny. I'm Sharon. Welcome to Think This Is Episode 2 and a bit because we want to ramble. We know it's Episode 2. We want to ramble about more stuff that we did in Episode 1. We do want to talk a little bit more about the photographer and the celebrant because it is a lot to say. And because we are there from woe to go between the both of us, we see a lot of stuff. Yep, a lot of stuff. A lot of stuff. A lot of stuff. But we still are going to focus around the ceremony at this stage. Good, good. So let's rip straight into it, Sharon. Okay. I want to talk. (laughs) I know exactly what's coming here. Let's get into multiple photographers. Mm. Photographers in your space. Mm. So there's not only a situation where, you know, you need to be careful that you're not blocking the view for parents and stuff like that, but sometimes photographers are a little bit too close. A little bit too close. Mm. No spatial awareness. No. Can you run me through what's going on there, Sharon? Okay. I don't know what's going on then. So it infuriates me because I actually have tapped a videographer on the bum. To to get get out of the way. To get her out of the way because they literally... Ass crack in front of the parents. <laughs> really? Mm, no, true story. Oh, mm. my stories are true. Like I don't plumber. make shit. Oh, yeah, a little like bit. Like a plumber. A plumber bit. Are they called yeah, plumber smaller. videography? It was a smaller www.plumbervideography.com. So, yes, we can get in the way. Oh, sorry, not we. Celebrant, I'm all sort of. You lot can get in the way as well. Yeah, but... Especially when there's so many of you. I think I, I, I understand the spatial mm. awareness. I understand where yeah. to be. I'm very careful that I don't block the view for the parents. When the bride's coming down the aisle, mm. nothing worse than the photographer two inches from the groom blocking the view, all that sort of stuff. Oh, but also that. mid-ceremony, you would see a lot of photographers who, when you're doing vows would come in two inches from your head. Yes. Haven't you got one of those long lens thingies that you can do that from afar? Yeah. Why do you need to be that close? There's a lot of photographers, I don't know, 70 to 200 lens, which is a long one. It's a little bit of a dated thing. And and most photographers now, uh, your reported style is in your 35 mil and you're not all that far away to get a close-up. So they tend to encroach a little bit. I would obviously change and use a 50 mil or an 85 mil and get a little bit further back. Yes. Because I'm worried about the spatial. Yes. But I some people only have that lens on and they're going to come in too close to your head. Yeah, so yeah. that's why you're feeling that, Sharon. Yes. I feel... I have smacked into a video camera before. <laughs> but without a word of a lie. What? I did not see him coming from behind. I did really? not see... This. <laughs> and I've turned around to get out of the way. Whack. And of course, I've yelled out, shit. Oh, mid <laughs> Well, it bloody hurt. I wasn't expecting to see him yeah, there. Well, some video guys come in with three Look, or four cameras. We did have a laugh afterwards. Cameras everywhere, dudes on top of you. It looks yeah. like a film set. So yeah. I'm a very careful, Sharon. Mm. One photographer, one videographer. If you're going to bring five videographers, then you're not the guys for me. No, no, hang on. Take a step back for one second. That's okay. how you like to work. Yeah, yeah, that's how I like it. I have worked with some amazing photographers that have a double shooter. A second shooter, rather. I love them. I love their work. They work incredibly well together. Good old It's Beautiful here. Classic example of a team perfection. True. But you add two shooters and they are so aware. Like both of those girls are not in your face. They've got one down there. They've Mm. got one up here. So you already already know how they work. They're not going to get in my grill. There's no doubt. The good photographers will be spatially aware and work that out. I'm just saying don't poo-poo your second shooters because I know you do a little bit. I do. (laughs) But again, that's a style thing. I don't like a second shooter. That's someone else I've got to get around. That's Mm. someone else shooting from a second viewpoint, which I don't think Mm. I need. The video, on the other hand, I have done a wedding where there has been two photo, two photographers. Yep. Three video guys. Yep, yep. Now, how did that make you feel, Sharon? Did you feel a No, I just said to them, you're squashed? not getting in my way, are you? You're not going to be getting in my way. Or the parents' way. Is that mm. camera going to stay there the whole ceremony? Mm. Please tell me that's not staying there the whole ceremony. That's a problem. People, when you book <laughs> videographers, just ask how many videographers are coming. But also remember, mm. there may be three there because the couple have asked for that. 
don't always think that it's the videographer or the photographer or the florist or the cake person or the celebrant saying doing that. The couple may very well have said, can you make sure that we have three of your top guys? Hang on, hang on, hang on. Let me understand how that phone call goes. Yeah. Yep. 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 Hello, I'd like to book video. Can I have seven video guys? <laughs> no. I want it from seven angles. <laughs> what is the point? It looks like a film set. There's dudes everywhere. But maybe their cousin had this company and that's who they wanted smudging. you. I don't want to see a billion dudes working. We're not talking billion. We're talking three at most. That's the most I've ever seen. Yeah, but then you add two photographers to oh, it. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. you're five dudes. Or like, or, or chicks. But <laughs> outside of that, there's five people floating around in ceremony. So I get worried, Sharon. Well, if it's a small space, I'd be terrified. Mm. But if it's a big outdoor yep. vineyard yep. wedding... Knock yourself out. I just, and I don't want to dwell on this, but well, I I'm a big right. fan. I think you do like to dwell on this. <laughs> of less is more. Yeah. Less is more. Can I tell you a story, Sharon? Oh, I love stories. Yeah. Let me tell you a quick story. So, um, there was an event manager uh, to be not named in this podcast. We're doing a lot of that to be not named. <laughs> So uh, it's a big wedding, big wedding, right? We've got 350 people there. Uh, it's high end, it's high profile. And the event manager comes over to me and says, so where's the, uh, the other photographers? <laughs> I said, mate, I thought I'd just bring one really good one rather than five shit ones. <laughs> and uh, he goes, well, you better be bloody good. And then storms off. And all day he was watching me like a hawk. Did he have his little iPhone out to back up oh, your work in case you didn't man. come up with it? And boots? sure, I, I nailed it. Everything was great. It's a standard wedding for me. I don't care if there's 600 people or three. Yeah, I yeah. still think you only need one guy. But, you know, other photographers will, well, yeah, they don't want to shoot in pairs. But um, that, when he looked at me, like, and he's a very high-profile dude. I can't mention his name. But when he uh, looked at me and said, where are the other photographers? <laughs> Ouch. Yeah, don't worry. It went okay. It went okay. Um, well, let's move on, Sharon, to I want to talk about uh, group shots at a wedding. Oh. How is you? How do you think about group? What do you feel? What do you just consider the group I shots? I know you're not a fan of them. I am not a huge fan. Let me just, let me just get close to the audio. <laughs> I hate them. <laughs> Every now and then, if you are elevated enough, and this is why I hang around at my ceremonies a little bit longer, it's not just for the free champagne. <laughs> well, it is for the free champagne. However, it's to yes. get back on my PA and get this group photo done as quickly as possible. Because well, I can is... bellow out and go, right, everyone in this now, and then the, mm. uh, the photographer can then scoot up to a tower, ladder, do whatever they like. And it, they're good, but that's very rare. It's very rare. So uh, I, Sharon. You can't get high enough. I know you talk your couples out of them. I try and talk everyone out of a group shot. I reckon there's an enormous buzzkill. That ceremony finishes, all your mates want to hug and kiss you. They, they feel the love. You're two inches mm, taller. Everything's mm. amazing. And then some dickhead stands on a ladder two, and, says, two step ladder. <laughs> and says, hey, hey, don't hug anybody. Just stand here like dorks in a big group while I yell at you and push the sides in. Where's the fun in that? You're very harsh on this group photo. Yeah, I'm so harsh. So Remember, I, I've lost again. bookings. I've lost <laughs> bookings from a bride and groom sitting with me in the initial meeting and they say, yeah, and then we want a group shot. And then I explain about the buzz. And then I can see them nodding their head to me like they agree. And then I never hear from them again. Yeah. Yep. Every ditch. Yeah. Uh, but again, with the group shot, the group shot, I don't know why it's your responsibility. It's not. It's just that's what I like to do. I like to get this shot done as quickly as possible. And I've usually got the loudest voice To there. help the photographer? To no, to help the couple, help the guests, help the photographer. Mm. That's, that's my service. Group I like shot. to do that. Group shot. It's a game of where's Wally. Stop it. Where is my Uncle Bob? <laughs> oh, there he is. Also He's hiding understand. in the back corner. Shares. Great shot. Great like shot. I said before, you don't know. Most photographers I know do not like the group photo. No, I don't. Know I would say ninety percent of the photographers I work for do not like the group photo. But it's not their yep. freaking wedding. I couldn't give a shit whether you like it or not, John Warren. Of oh, okay, Warren okay, hang on, hang on. Let me finish because mm. the couple may mm. want it. Mm. It's a documentation of who was there. Okay. It doesn't matter if they're just little tiny heads. Okay, they can look at it year after year. Okay, it'll make the photo album. That's about it. At some point, are you saying you're just getting paid your money, dude? Take the fucking photo. Well, that's what I'm trying to say to you. Pull your head in. <laughs> They're paying you. 
So take the freaking group photo, <laughs> shut up, and then if on. If a client says to me, oh, it's really important to me, it's one of the greatest photos, I'll, I sure I'll take it. I know you will. I you, will take you it. You like, you act so tough, right? I will do, yeah, and then I'm just a marshmallow. You but are so much. I'll do everything I can to explain to them to about the buzz and the kill, and I want the thing to flow and hug your mates. But I don't know if you but want you to do, do that. So yeah. after one of my ceremonies, mm-hmm. I literally do. Look, let's make sure that we've got five minutes of the love fest. I call it yes. kiss, hug. Your photographer is going to catch some amazing, natural, happy photographs. Yes. Five to seven minutes. I usually say about two songs. So you, it, I've reached the bar. I've hang grabbed on. my is champagne that, or five, my gelati. That's five minutes of them kissing, and hugging everyone. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, okay. Yeah. So here's my problem. If the group shop happens after the kiss and hug, then you are less chance of dragging those people together. And it's more of an effort to go and get Uncle Frank, who's gone out for a smoke. I have lost a mum or two, I must admit. <laughs> that's right. So... It doesn't matter. At the end of the day... If, if the that's ceremony couple... finishes, oh, and so then you do the group shot, and then you kiss and hug, is the only way I can see it to, to no. happen without the... Totally the, the mess. The mess. Well, maybe I just do it quickly and thoroughly, because I don't get that mess. Mm. I don't know. All right. We're never going to agree on this. We are not ever going to agree Apart on this, Sharon. Apart from the fact that we don't like group photos, I yep. honestly believe it's up to the couple yep. if that's what they want. When I got married three years ago in New Zealand, had a, our gorgeous photographer, Jai, come over, shoot our Did little... you have a group shot, Sharon, at your wedding? I did. No. <laughs> <laughs> no. And I'm not a fan of the group photo, but for some reason on that day, I'm mm. like, <gasps> mind you, there's only 28 of us. Well, and funny you mention that because there was no group shot at my wedding, but there was only three of us. <laughs> mm. Yes, I succumb. Because all of a sudden in my brain, I'm like, I've got to have a photo of who was here. As if I'm not going to remember 28 people at my wedding. True. But it didn't matter. My bride brain slipped in and my celebrant <laughs> brain went out down the toilet at my nervous wee. Anyway, uh, my, have we shit can the group photo enough? Let's move on to the next topic, Sharon. I want to discuss the exit strategy. Ceremony finishes. Bang, your man and wife. You go and so or, or chick and chick or dude and dude. You go and sign the documents, mm. and then you come back out. You would then present them with it. Blah blah blah. Quick wrap like up. Like hell, I do. Oh, but you, there's the quick wrap up for the finish, yeah. and then it ends. What happens at that point, Sharon? How do you think that exit should go? Oh, I know how it should go. I oh, set I it up. Oh, oh I, know. I know. Jerry. I <laughs> yep. During the signing, where I bang that signing out so fast, your head Bow. spins. But it's a nice three-minute downtime for the two of you who yep. have just Good. been made legally married. It's Good. a very special moment. Okay. But I don't want guests bored out of their brain for three songs. It's just not going to happen. So I'm quick, straight, but... Get back to position. Yes, Get good. your flowers back if that is what you are carrying. If good. not, doesn't matter. Hold hands. This aisle is yours. You have gone up single. You are going down this aisle married. Mm. This is super important. And I say to my couples, don't let anyone touch you. I will make an announcement. This is your aisle. Get down the end. Then they can grope as much as they like. Okay, okay. Make it what about? worth everything. I'll make sure I've got my eye. Shh. I make sure I've got my eye on the photographer, videographer, to make sure that they are ready to rock and roll. Good, good. You see me in action. Have they kissed the parents on the exit? That slows it down. No, like no, that. Sharon. Your mum wants to hug you on the edge. She's of the hugged ceremony. you all freaking day. No, no. I'm going. I'm going. Um, you've, you've, uh, you've said. Let's go. Uh, Music starts. Uh. Kiss the front row. Mm. Hug and kiss the front row, then explode the way out. No, because I think that sets people up. Because back in the old days, <laughs> you actually did kiss all the people on the aisle on your way down. Yeah, yeah, That's yeah. That's what we did but years ago. That doesn't happen now because it slows you right down. And like I said, symbolic goal. You just need to get down and get the shot. All right. Here's my plan. So can what, I, can no, I go so from what happens, the people behind think, yes. oh, we're kissing them along the way. No, that's not it. I reckon you kiss and hug the front row... You rock it the hell out. You don't kiss people on the aisles because you can kiss the second, third, you can't reach the fourth one. No, the time no. you get to the end is a mess. Yeah. So kiss and hug the front, rock it down to the group of people at the back. Mm-mm. And oh. then kiss and hug them. And then people who are chaired will come to you. Hmm. But that way you've had a, a recessional. You've kissed your parents and you've got to the end of the, uh, in, into the middle of your people. If the people part... Like the Red Sea and you are Moses. Mm. Don't go through that gap. 
because you end up in the middle of nowhere. Yeah. And then you're weird and awkward on your own. And then you turn around and you come back in. <laughs> That's so true. Yeah. So never go past the group at the end. Walk into the middle yeah. of that group. I'll tell you what I'm going to do for you. What, what, uh, what am I going to do the for you? The next that I do, now yes. it's a little tricky because we're in coronavirus uh, situation here, which is going to make history books. There's no doubt about that. True. Um, the next wedding I do that is mm. over 50 people, I'm going to try that with the parents. Good. Kiss and I'm going, the front row. Yes, and I'm Good. going to let you know how it goes and if I will implement that. Implementation. Yeah, I'm going to give it a crack. Because remember, now, understand that not uh, everyone gets on well with their parents. Oh yeah, but if you've made the front row, oh, you'd be surprised. So, what if, I do if you're not getting along with your with your, your uh, aforementioned parent, he's possibly in the sixth row. I've had that. <laughs> yes, I have yes, had that too. Yes, yes, I've had that quite a lot yep. actually. Yes. All right, I'm going. To, I'm going to give that a crack. Mm. Good, good. And I'll get back to you. I have another topic to discuss here, Of course Sharon. you do. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They're coming thick and fast. Bada bing, bada bing, bada bing, bada bing. I best have a drink of the soda water. You drink. I'm having champagne next time. This what about family dynamics? Oh, yeah, that's so you would obviously ca- catch up with couples beforehand, Correct. as do I. Yes. And I would really like to know who's married, who's mm-hmm. not married, who's repartnered, mm-hmm. who is, is whatever. Super important. Super so as I've mentioned a hundred times, I have a wedding workshop with all my couples a few weeks out from their wedding. Yep. I've sent them questionnaires. I know exactly what their songs are, who's what and how. Mm. We sit down and we draw a little... I've got it printed out beautifully, of course. It's just my... <laughs> of course. <laughs> of course. Um, I, have, I call it a mud map. A mud map? Yes. Is mud an acronym I don't, for something? No, I got it from my um, merchandising days. But anyway, Married under... It absolutely means nothing right. to anyone, but I call it a mud map. So I've got the first three rows yep. of seats in little rectangles for me to fill in. So the questions I ask my couples are, are your parents alive? Because that actually is one of the questions for our notice of intended marriage. Such an important question. I Can I digress? No, that's how we got in trouble before. Mm. So <laughs> you should have a little notebook on the side. Oh, yeah, oh, okay. So are your parents alive? Yes, they are. Are they still together? Yes, they are. Do they like each other? Yes, they do. Perfect. You're super easy. Right. Are your parents alive? Yes, yes, yes. Uh, No, but they are separated. And it's not a great Mm. separation. This is why it is so important. It's not because I'm being a sticky beak. No, you need to know. It's because I need to get to the ceremony and go, right, mum, dad, let's go sit down. They haven't spoken since Mm. she ran off with the milkman. Important information. Right good. now, go. What were you going to say? Good, good. I uh, know a know story. Know your couple's background. Know a story from another photographer who was calling, they're doing family shots. He was calling for the father of the groom. Oh, I can see where this is going. Uh, he called for him three or four times and then someone leaned over and said, mate, he died last week. Uh, that. Yeah. You do your homework, man. Know, so, know everything about the family. Find out but if they're grandparents. I did, I did grandparents. I did wish a grandfather had Know that your grandmother is in the, you know, in her 90s and sit in the second row and get a photo of her because that's really important. Yeah. I did one wedding at Stones where there were Not the eight, venues. <laughs> eight, ve- eight parents in the front row. So every one of them remarried. I was trying to work that out. Right? I'm usually an intelligent woman, yeah. And then the, so the mothers are looking at me to see who gets the aisle seat. <gasps> And I'm like, ooh, I would normally, you know, I would have an opinion on everything, but that one, <laughs> hell, I just smoke bombed and got out of there. Okay, so that's happened. Do you know how I got out of a situation like that once? Again, I had my little mud mat. Yep. I was marrying a, a couple from Adelaide, mm. Canberra, irrelevant. And I said, right, what's happening with the first front two roads? Mum's dad's, same old questions. Yes. None of them like each other. They've all repartnered, run off, da 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 da. Yep. I said, right, this is how it's going to roll. I'm gonna. I'm never gonna see them again, so I don't really care how I come across. <laughs> so I did the whole ditzy blonde yes. thing and went. Oh, oh, everyone, take a seat. Sit down, everyone, and I let them decide where they wanted where to they ended sit. Up. Yes, Ooh. best case scenario because this couple were getting so worked up about where to put them. Mm. Leave it up to me. Let They're them gonna sit. Let them do it. Okay, with that. But I've never done that once. I'm all, I, everything I else. would always move a mother to the aisle seat. I like the mums on the aisle. Yeah, yeah, because yeah, most of the time they're the most emotional one. So if ever anyone's going to cry or something coming down the aisle, at least I've got the mother right there that oh, I can. For the photo. That I can, yeah, that I can yeah, take a photo right. of is important. And sometimes mm-hmm. the dad will sit in the aisle seat. And then my way around that is I say, oh, tradition is that the, uh, the prettiest person would be on the aisle. And then mum You're would go, oh, 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 and move on to the aisle seat. <laughs> yeah, yeah, good, yeah, good, good. Yeah, it's important. Yeah. Mm. Mm. There is so many um, 
variables. True, but the people. the I think the underlying importance there is do your freaking homework. Us as suppliers, should yes, do our homework, correct? know everything about it and find yeah. out who's with what, with where, and then. And I actually have had some really close calls. And if I didn't know the information, for example, dad and mum had separated, dad's still holding a flame for mum. Mum had moved on. Oh, really? Yes, yes. Their daughter. Did it get awkward, Sharon? Did it get awkward? The father of the bride, because obviously the stepdad and the mum were standing together, he plopped himself in between them as he walked her down the aisle and I could see the push. Really? Yeah, he yeah. slid the stepdad yeah, out. He, he and pushed said, his oh, way I'm in. in pole position. And because I knew the background, mm. I was able to just diffuse it a little bit, not draw any attention to it, and Good. I knew that we could move on because I knew something was going to happen with this dad, mm. who I'd met and who was gorgeous, but he was just. I would have loved a bit of fisticuffs between real dad and stepdad. Why? The stepdad was just as gorgeous. Yeah, but imagine that at a wedding. Fisticuffs from parents. Look, I must admit, the next morning I thought, if I read in the paper there was an altercation at a a venue in Werribee, I knew exactly who that was going to be. But I wanted to make sure that my bride was not concerned about what was going to happen with dad. And that's the role that I took. Mm. It could be the mum in me. Mm. It could be the eldest child in me. Sharon, across know. the board, as much as you are a celebrant, you do what you do, and I'm a photographer, I do what I do, it is the number one important thing to make sure that the bride oh. and groom are looked yeah. after. Bride and bride, groom and groom. All combinations, couples. couples, but that's the most important... That's the, that's the person who is... Is paying our bills. But not only that, that's the person that you've bonded with. Yeah, I want to make sure that that is the greatest day of their life. And if that means I need to get involved and just rearrange a set or a parent (laughs) or row three's empty and no one's filled it up, I'll go and get someone from row three. That's a celebrant's role to do. Yeah, no, no, but true, but some don't. And a lot of photographers will take and and step that up. Well, so they should because, you know, we step up for But things like when you're coming down the aisle, right? Um, You're announced and you come down the aisle and Mm. there's awkward, weird silence. I'm the dude that goes, woo, and then I start shooting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I don't want the experience for the, for the couple to be weird or awkward. And then if I see a way I can stop the awkward, I'll do it. Yeah. Bang, whatever, continuation because the camera stopped. has stopped with All the right, battery, battery problem. Because we are professionals. <laughs> That's right. I am actually a photographer by trade. Yeah. So, Johnny, we've talked about the exit. And as usual, you and I do things ask about. Good. I'd like to do it, just touch quickly before we head off. Mm. Um, I would like to touch briefly on the entrance. The entrance of the bride actually coming, or the groom, or whatever coming yeah, down the aisle. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Which usually comes before the exit. It does. But anyway, here we are. Entrance. <laughs> as a photographer, do you like your the guest seated or standing, or does it depend on venue space? Give me your thoughts on this seating, standing thing. Because traditionally we ask yeah. all of our guests to stand. Traditionally. Yeah. I things would, are changing. I would prefer them seated. I know you do. That's why I prefer them seated them. is a lot more mm. um, aesthetic. I can see more heads and I can photograph more people looking at the bride as opposed to... Um, I keep saying bride, Sharon. You do. I need to say... Um, Couple. Yeah, yeah. Can we just start again? Yeah. I did it twice in that fucking yeah, 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 yeah. And, and understand, like, we're used to dealing with mainly brides because us gays really are only about 3% of the community. Just True. so you know. But anyway, but that's not going to help today. Go. True. All right. So we are... One, two, three, we are... Yep. I know we do things ask about, which hmm. is just how we roll. Um, before we wrap up today's episode, and we've spoken about exit. Can we just have a little chat about the entrance? The entrance, Sharon. The opposite of the exit. The opposite of the exit. Yes. Right? So, do you prefer guests to be seated or standing as our bride Mm. or groom walk down the aisle? Traditionally, guests always stand or always stood for bridegroom. I would prefer them seated. This is interesting. Why? Seated is a lot more aesthetically pleasing that I can see more of the people. So it's aesthetically pleasing if for the photographs. If they're standing, then if you're a guest, you can't see through most of what's going on. I reckon the only people standing who are going to see um, uh, the aisle entrance are the people on the aisle. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you're seated, then possibly the person in three, three, three turns in three head, out. has a look and see everything. Okay, so... And what? I'm normally down on one knee to shoot that entrance so that I'm not blocking the view for the groom. That's because you're so getting old and you can't if, get up. <laughs> it's hard to get up. But if I'm down on one knee, then I'm at eye height with yeah, yeah, your yeah. mum sitting in the front row. Mm-hmm. So that shot then is of her eyes yeah. at that right level rather than looking straight up her nose. Which you do capture beautifully. Yeah, rather, yeah, yeah, you're yeah, you're yeah. known as a moment guy for a reason. I like, like. Moments. I like guest standing. Because one, I like the old tradition, and two, quite often when at the request of the photographer, I've said, please remain seated, we're just a little bit tight on space, we're going to miss the shot, blah, blah, blah. Uh, I see them doing a lot of this twisting in their chair, yeah. especially if there's a cute little two and a True. half year old with oh, yeah, lace yeah, 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 little yeah, nappy yeah. knickers yeah. on who's yeah. rolling around the aisle um, because she has no plans on getting to the end of the aisle. Mm. They miss it. True. So purely as a that. selfish photographer for the aesthetic <laughs> of how it looks. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I actually I remember one wedding at um, the State Library. State Library is a dark, dark, lonely place. And so uh, we've put in a couple of sneaky lights just to pump oh, the thing okay. up. Yeah, 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 yeah which yeah, is yeah. very unusual for us. But because that space is so dark mm-hmm. and dark. Uh, so we've set up the lights, everything's great. Um, the, uh, the bride and her father start to come down the aisle and then the celebrant says, oh, now everyone, please be upstanding for the entrance of the bride and her father. And then they blocked all the lights. And the light that was coming through came through fragmented through heads and it was like walking through a zebra crossing of oh, yes. black and white. And myself and the videographer just face palmed and went, oh, no. All right, so who's at fault here? Uh, all of us, because of lack of you... communication, to say to the dude, hey, make sure everyone's... Dude. No doubt. But we walked into the knee, screamed in this dark place and went, ooh, and then I say, Marcus, go get some lights, man. And he goes and runs to the car and then there's... Only... And then it starts and everyone stands up. Okay. Uh... Perfect example of a celebrant, because it would have been a celebrant. Oh, no, some but, ministers... Oh, no, it was a celebrant. Uh, yeah, some ministers... Oh, it was a celebrant. <laughs> Actually, I've seen some good passes. It was actually one of my favourite celebrants. Are we dropping names? Can we drop names? Oh, it depends. Andrew Redman. Oh, we we love Andrew Redman! (laughs) Andrew, you should have known better! I love Redman. No, no, it was a failure to communicate with Redman. But please, please, I digress. Uh, Continue. What was I saying? Oh, no, not that again. We sometimes get (laughs) mid-sentence and Sharon goes... What was my point? I think we're talking about entrance, your yes. point on seating or standing. Yes. Okay, we Seat. get up there. Classic. This, mm. And I make, well, I don't make sure because sometimes, you know, relationships are a little strained up there. <laughs> <laughs> Let's, for example, you've got a bridal party walking down towards who's ever up the top of the aisle. Yep. As they're walking up, walking visually, they're yes. staring at this person in the eye. Yes. Then they just chuck a left. There's no acknowledgement. They're staring at each other and then there's nothing. They just turn to get into their position for the wedding, for the ceremony. Please just give whoever is up there a little oh, peck on the cheek. Yes. Then go to your little If posse. you are dead, come down, shake yeah. your new son-in-law, daughter-in-law. Yeah. Lift up a veil if there is one. That's Kiss your often. daughter or your son and then have a seat. You've done some mechanics. But, I always but, had the hug. I always try and talk him into a hug. Hug? Yeah, always. Oh, I like the peck. But. Um, it's so different. I like the, the hugs are more emotional. And one time, even my eye leaked. The dad's leaned in. Yep. He's whispered something into his future son-in-law's ear. Yep. yep. Lost it. Oh, jeez. So emotional. I have seen, I've seen some crying Situations. Have we got time to talk about a couple of quick crying situations? Yeah, I think so. All right. So I'm in um, Kangaroo Ground at, uh, what's that one? I don't know. It'll come to me. A small little tiny little chapel. The groom is up um, the one end waiting for the doors to open. Everything's magical. The doors open. There's a beam of light. The bride shows up. I'm down on one knee. I'm shooting away. The bride looks amazing. I hear over my shoulder. (laughs) (laughs) So I turn over my shoulder, right? And I'm going, man, great, the groom's crying. So I go bang, bang, bang. And then I turn back to the bride and I hear, <laughs> like this. 20 minutes. 20 minutes of, <laughs> that dude was a mess. 
And his best man's rubbing his back, you know, it's okay, mate, trying to, you know, calm him down. And then... I love it. So he, he, we get outside, we get outside and, um, you know, they've kissed and hugged everyone mm-hmm. and then the best man comes over and he grabs him almost in a headlock and he says, dude, you cried like a bitch. <laughs> That's not fair. They hung it on him forever. I want you to know that one or two well-placed tears is a beautiful experience. They'll look at you and go, oh, my God, Davo, he's a lovely bloke. Cry like a bitch. And your mates will hang it on you forever. Just a little bit of a mo, Just a a little bit of beautiful, Sharon, but the whole... (laughs) I don't care. And it comes with if cry get, face. He gets it picked on for the rest of his life. Ugly cry face, Sharon. I don't care. <laughs> 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 yep. Leave him alone. Let him cry. Oh, yeah. It's beautiful. I actually had a bunch of groomsmen couldn't keep it together once. Boy. Like all three of them. Oh, jeez. I loved it. Loved Did you know, so, actually, Saturday's wedding just gone. Um, groomsman number two. Yeah. No. He was tearing up as the bribe was coming down. I love down. that. Oh, I love it. I love One of the it. questions I ask like, when we do wedding workshop is, do we have any criers? <laughs> oh, I'm pretty sure I'll cry. Sharon, yep, I'll definitely cry. Yeah, yep, I like to... Definitely going down. I like to know if dads are emotional or if they think that... Oh, no, dads no, dad's hard. I get a lot of emotional dads. And then you see them, you know, when you think that they're going to be hard and then you see them just that little just, bit and... You, and yeah. Man, I've got one eye for that all the time. They're the best. Yeah, keep an eye on the group. So, you know, it's That's a shame it. that it's the mothers, you almost, you, we just expect they're going to have a little bit of a, an eye oh, leak. Yeah. But we don't expect it from the dad. So when it happens, we're like, oh, oh my God, black, oh, but, but cheer, I'm, the crowd goes freaking wild. But I'm a bit desensitised to the mothers, right? Mothers will cry a lot. You, you, that's a normal. But it's when, a very good sweeping generalisation. When dad cries, <sighs> I'm a mess. I know. I see it go, and I put my myself in that guy's position. Mm. You know, my daughter is thirteen. I'm him in fifteen years. Yeah, possibly. And you know, I I assimilate with him. I'm well, a, I hope you I'm, the, I'm a dad too. By then. No, I know. My wedding. Uh, when, uh, sorry, when Lucy gets married, mm. I will be a mess. <laughs> I I will cry. I will not go. <laughs> but, <laughs> so you may not be the loud. No, I will be a little tiny, a little small, weepy. I've seen the biggest and the best of them go down. Crying? Yeah, it makes yeah. my day. It makes my ceremony. Good. Love it. Good. But you need to, I, I, I remember, um, I can't name the celebrants. Older <laughs> dude, industry yeah, legend, right? Yeah, yeah. But so it's an emotional thing. The bride's coming down. The groom starts tearing up and everything's great. I get this amazing shot of the groom and the celebrant says, oh, ladies and gentlemen, we've got a cryer. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, no, you've ruined everything. Oh, no. It's a beautiful, beautiful moment. And you've gone, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> I'm like, oh, man. I actually, here's another story for you. I had one of my grooms, love, gorgeous man. One of my grooms got very emotional during his vows. Mm-hmm. And he's like he's he's literally crying. Yes. He's not just eye leaking. He's crying. Noisy crying. Noisy crying. No noisy crying. It was quite classy. Bad crying face. No, no, no. no very classy cry. Yep. And then halfway through his vows, and we we're all on this emotional roller coaster with him. Good. Dad goes, "Oh, come on, you big sock." Yeah. <laughs> there I is. doubled over laughing. I wanted to go and hit him, <sighs> but I also uh, wet myself laughing. Yeah. And it geez. just flipped the mood like that. Yeah. Got through the rest of his vows. <laughs> But it was his dad. He's the only one that's able to get away with that. He can get away with that. I'm okay with that. Okay, so how about we wrap this episode up? Because we literally could talk for hours about ceremonies, couldn't we? We could. We haven't even touched on the bridal parties getting ready. We haven't touched on what happens at the reception. So many more episodes. People, as much as you think you're into one, what is this, two, maybe two and a half after I chop it up. (laughs) There could be 15, 20 episodes of us rambling like Mm. old moles. I'm okay with that. I am a good rambler. Uh, how do we wrap it up, Sharon? So, yeah. So I put if on you, my radio announcer voice and wrap it up? No, I'll do it. So if you would like to, for us to talk about a topic that intrigues you, email us at theweddingcrunch at gmail.com.au. Watch us on YouTube, The Wedding Crunch. And, of course, our podcasts, which is probably what you're listening to. And our... We'll be seeing you real soon. We all know that Sharon is the one that set those things up. I possibly had no input there. No, you will be speaking to me if it's an email. True, true. I'll look after (laughs) cameras and editing. 
Sharon will do the grunt work. We will not be starting up an Instagram page, my wedding. Oh, wedding so much wedding. social media. My Can't life is taken up with social media, oh, no. Sharon. Um, we'll be doing it through Martini Bride, Sharon the Celebrate, and more on photography. Just, you'll just be seeing it all there. Don't you worry about that. All right, Johnny, let's wrap this up. I've got things to do, people to see, champagne to buy. But, let's go. Stay tuned now for another 45 minutes of non-stop classic rock. <laughs> Triple M rocks football.